Hi. Now, here we've got a question that's based around finding roots of an equation by graphical methods and iterative methods. So the first part of the question is by sketching the curves y equals the natural log of x and y equals 8 minus 2x squared on a single diagram, show that the equation natural log of x equals 8 minus 2x squared has exactly one real root. So if you'd like to try this, haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. Okay, let's see how you got on if you had a go. So for part one then, let's start by sketching the graph y equals the natural log of x. So we'll set up our y-axis and x-axis. And for this one, y equals the natural log of x is a graph that tends towards the y-axis for positive values of x as we get closer to zero. It doesn't cross it, the y-axis is an asymptote, then it comes up like so and goes off like that. So that's the graph then of y equals the natural log of x. The other graph, y equals 8 minus 2x squared, I see this as a transformation of the graph x squared. x squared, remember then, is the parabola passing through the origin. If we multiply it by 2, it's just going to make it slightly steeper. And then the negative reflects it in the x-axis, so we're going to have a graph looking like this. And then adding 8 translates the graph up 8 units parallel to the y-axis. So we're going to have a parabola looking something like this. Coming up through the 8 here on the y-axis, dropping away like so. So that's the graph then of y equals 8 minus 2x squared. So how does it show that the equation natural log of x equals 8 minus 2x squared has exactly one real root? Well, each of these are the graphs, okay? So we're looking to find out where they intersect. And they only intersect at one place, this point here. Okay, so we've just got one root, okay? one root because of that one point of intersection. That value, that root, okay, is going to be the x value that's just down here on the x-axis. And in part two, we've got to explain how the diagram shows that the root is between one and two. So again, if you'd like to just pause the video, come back when ready, and I'll just tell you why that is the case. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go at that. So why is the root between 1 and 2? Well, it's all based on the fact that this root here, okay, lies between this point here and this point here, where y equals the natural log of x and y equals 8 minus 2x squared cross the x-axis. So to get this point here, what's it going to be? Well, when y equals 0, we should be familiar with the fact that the natural log of 1 gives 0. So this point here is 1. And for this graph here, when y equals 0, we've got 8 minus 2x squared would equal 0. So that means 2x squared would equal 8. x squared would have to equal 4. And x would be the square root of 4, which would be plus or minus 2. So this point here is going to be minus 2. And this one here would be 2. So clearly the root lies between 1 and 2. So that's part 2 as well, really, based on our graphical solution here. So you're just going to have to write something out based on that idea that I've just shown you. OK, now in part 3, we've got to use the iterative formula x with a subscript n plus 1 equals the root of 4 minus a half natural log of x with a subscript n. So using this formula with a suitable starting value to find the root. And we've got to show all our working and give the root correct to three decimal places. So again, if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. 
Okay, so how did you get on with this part? Well, let's just put up here that this is part three anyway. So we need to have our first approximation to the root x1 and we take any value between 1 and 2. I'm going to take 1.5 okay but it's totally up to you which value you take and I'll strongly encourage you to experiment with taking different values. Now we're going to be using a calculator to work out subsequent values all right so to get x2 Okay, we're going to need to enter this value of 1.5 as x1 into here. But the quickest way of doing this is to take your calculator, make sure that you press the AC button so that the accumulator is cleared, okay, and then enter 1.5. Once you've entered 1.5, press the equals button and now this is saved under the answer key. Now we're just going to enter the iterative equation here so x2 would be equal to so just enter the root okay of 4 minus and then enter the fraction a half and then the natural log of what would be x1, 1.5, but don't enter 1.5, okay? Instead of entering 1.5, just press the answer key, okay? So you should have this displaying as ANS in there. Now when you press equals, you'll get what x2 is, and you should find that you get 1.94 eight six five and so on and to get x3 all we need to do is press equals again and it's feeding this value in as the answer here and what you get for x3 then is 1.91479 and so on and if you press equals again you're going to get our next value x4 which turns out to be 1.91707 and so on. Now all the time I'm looking to see, because we've got to give the answer to three decimal places, I'm looking to see whether this fourth digit remains constant. And I can see that at the moment we've gone from a 7 to a 0, so I need to get more values. So we go for x5 now, we press equals and what we get is 1.91692 and so on. Again the fourth digit has changed so press equals again and get x6. x6 turns out to be 1.91693 and now I notice that we've remained on the 9. So I'm going to say that therefore x must be equal to 1.917 to three decimal places, 3DP for short. Okay, well I hope it's given you an idea on that part. Now for part four, we've got the, the curves y equals the natural log of x and y equals eight minus two x squared are each translated by two units in the positive x direction and then stretched by a scale factor of four in the y direction. Find the coordinates of the point where the new curves intersect giving each coordinate correct to two decimal places. So again, if this is a question you'd like to have a go at, just give you a moment to pause the video and uh, come back when ready and we'll run through the solution. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So let's have a look at our x coordinate here. We've seen at the moment that it's 1.917 or 1.91693 and so on if we leave it unrounded. That's this point here. And what we're going to do then is if we translate the curves by two units, then this x value is going to move across two units. So 
our x value is going to be 1.91693 and so on. Okay, we'll take the unrounded one plus two more units. And that gives us 3.9169 and so on. Now, that's our x value. Now, to get the corresponding value for y, what I'm going to work with is transformations of functions. We should be familiar with translating any graph by two units in the positive x direction is just by replacing any x in our function with x minus 2. But to stretch it by a scale factor of 4 in the y direction, we then have to multiply this with a 4. So if I was to take y equals the natural log of x, natural log of x as being f of x, then what I'm doing is going to create the equation, the natural log of x minus 2, where I replace any x with x minus 2, and then multiply it by 4. That will give me the stretch, scale factor 4. So using that concept over here, I can say that therefore y will equal 4 multiplied by the natural log of taking my x value, 3.9169, subtracting 2. Well, that takes me back to an x value of 1.91693 and so on. And if you work this out, you get 2.6028 and so on. So, therefore, the point of intersection, okay, for those coordinates, what are they going to be? Well, we've got to give our answers to two decimal places, so this one's going to be 3.92, and the y coordinate to two decimal places will be. 2.60, 2.60, and that's to 2dp, two, two decimal places, all right?